the silver medal last time. He's the Commonwealth Games champion. In fact, we've got the top three medalists, one, two, and three, from the last World Championships in Daegu. Carvalho of France having a good season. If it's slow, he'll finish fast. I wouldn't really expect him to be in the mix at the end, though. Johan Kronje of South Africa, South African record holder. Alongside him, Mekinen Gebremedin won a bronze medal at the World Indoor Championships last year, sixth in the Olympic final. Go all the way back to Melbourne 2006 and the Commonwealth Games. Nate Brannan of Canada took the silver medal. Inga Britson, the European champion, had a great year last year. He's been struggling a little bit this year, but uh, started to show some of the form in the last week or two that he showed last year. And what a day for Matt Centrovitz. When the bronze medal two years ago, a complete shock that was, came storming down the home straight. Now on the track where his dad maybe could have won a medal. Well, I doubt he would have won a medal in 1980, but uh, with Kono Vett and the rest of them. If his dad would have been in the American team, he must be so proud. Chip Seba of Kenya. And Chris O'Hare from West Linton in Scotland. What a championships. His first ever championships he's had to get to this final. The favourite, the defending champion, number one in the world this year, Asbel Kiprop of Kenya. Serene running style. And you'd expect him to have enough ammunition to take people on him. His uh, main rivals may welcome from his two teammates, but 1500 meter final, anything can happen. We saw Tesfaye of Germany there as well. Well, Chris O'Hare, based in the United States at the University of Tulsa, he's finished his studies there, such, but he's still going back to have one more season, he says. Well, he was telling me that before he came and did so well at these championships. I don't know if he'll change his mind, but he's supposed to be heading back for a cross-country season. The men's 1500 meter final. <coughs> three and three-quarter laps of the track as usual, and of course this Luzhniki Stadium, the scene of one of the great 1500 meter races of all time in the 1980 Olympic final. And Kiprop, well aware of the history of his event, he's a good student these days of 1500 meter running and on occasion in the past he used to get his tactics a little bit wrong and when he's fit and healthy, Brendan, though, he's very difficult to beat in a slow or a fast race. Well, he's a magnificent physical athlete, he's got immense talent, he's got immense power and he's also got the ability to just stay with a strong pace and I think it's quite sensible for him they're not running very fast but it's better to run at a reasonable pace rather than jog around because when you jog around that's when you get into danger and for an athlete like him to run through there in about 43 seconds on schedule for about 60 seconds for the first lap then I think that's wise it makes for an honest race it makes for a true run race and also gets rid of that awful problem and they all bunch up and accidents can happen 59.6 and you know Kiprop can make 59.6 look like a jog. He's got that lovely slow action, those long legs, and he's now conceded the lead to his teammate Chep Seba, who's just gone off a little bit hard here. Chris O'Hare Chris aware of what's going on there. Moves up alongside uh, Gebri Medin. Matt Centrovis with the shaven head there, just uh, on the curb on the inside behind Inga Britson. And Kiprop allowing his teammate to open up a five-meter lead here, and he's looking around as if to say to Silas Kiplagat, where are you? I think the Kenyans really would fancy the chances of a one, two, three here. But Kiprop not interested in going after Chep Seba. Two to go. Well, we've talked all week about team races and team tactics, and this is the first time the Kenyans have actually gone to do something. Chep Seba, Kiprop, and Matt Centrovitz, the first three, and they incidentally were the first three in the World Championships last time it was held. Not quite in this order, and I don't expect it to stay in this order. But Chepseva has got a bit of a gap there as they went through 159, and now they're beginning to move. They've got to move because that's a little bit too much of a gap to give anyone going into the last lap. You wouldn't want to give him that start, except if you were Asbel Kiprop, to be honest. Chris O'Hare will be loving this. He's very much involved in this race and did well to move up there. But nobody's going past Kiprop. They're all watching Kiprop, and they've got to be careful. Chip Seba out in front, Kip the cap moving on the outside now. Centrovitz stuck on the curb. Inga Britson's on the curb. So Chris O'Hare 
realizing the race is getting moving now. He's got a good finish, Chris, but this pace is just picking up as Kiprop moves the field closer to Chepseba. Absolutely going the way of Asbel Kiprop, the champion. Former Olympic champion, sadly, run, finished last in the Olympic Games last year, and, and now Young O'Hare has found this race a little bit too much for him. It's a little bit too quick here, and the two rounds that he's run so magnificently, he's not been able to stay with it. But Chep Seaver now striding out down the back straight, and just watch this physical specimen called Kip Rock. He's absolutely fantastic here when he gets going, and you just sense he's about to get going. Kronje of South Africa running into a wall. Matt Semtovitz in a great position just on the curb. Kipple gets a fast finisher moving up on the outside. Could it be the same one, two, three as last time? Chep Seba still leading them. Kip Rob the favourite just looks for the danger on the outside and away he goes. Matt Semtovitz has still got a chance and Silas Kipple got Kronje looking for room on the inside. But it's Kip Rob pulling away. It's going to be gold again. He's defended his title. Kip Rob wins it. Semtovitz gets the medal again and Kronje nips in for the bronze on the inside and Chris O'Hare well it's been uh, a great championships for Chris and uh, this was just one race too many did really well to get to the final he can be very proud of his achievement of doing that but this young man here you know he doesn't run fast times yet in his career but goodness me Centrovitz has uh, got on the rostrum again but for me, Brendan, there was only ever going to be one winner. There was only ever one man who could win that, slow or fast. He's got just this lovely ability at the moment now to change up the pace when he wants to. He's got good 800 pace as well. And he just changes gear at the top of the home straight here. They almost run it for him. Asbel Kiprop, the defending champion, had little, little difficulty defending his title. And the battle is now on for second and third. Kronje on the inside. Matt Sendrovets in the red vest of the United States on the near side. A very tight finish. And Kiprop, there was no question about him. He was absolutely fantastic. There was the team part. And now Asbel Kiprop leads the chase. The group are coming back to Chef Sieber, who's led all the way. And at this point, young Chris O'Hare is finding this one just one series of laps too many he's done a brilliant job as chris o'hare getting here he's done really well in the first round and the second round but the strength and stamina that you need to operate at this level he hasn't got it yet but i'll tell you what he's a man for the future and we operate they're operating down the back straight and we've got some great statistics from mark butler and he's been timing the splits there they run 13.8 and then 13.7 and then 13.2 around the bend and then you knew what was going to happen. It was going to open up, it was going to accelerate. And Asbel Kiprop comes home here like a sprinter, 12.9 at the end of a 1,500 meters. That's exceptional running. And look at the gap there, easy, easy, easy. The favorite wins it, and Sendrovic has done a great job in second place. And then look at him, he is a sprinter, he looks like a sprinter, and that's a magnificent shot of Asbel Kiprop in full flow, just looking like there's no tomorrow. Diving away, brilliant piece of running, a fitting champion, defends his title, Olympic champion 2008 and twice world champion. He's running himself into history and it's great to see. Well, if you think about it, you know, the USA have got somebody on the roster in the last three championships now. Two of them are Centrovitz at the World Championships, Leo Manzano as well. But uh, young Centro, that was a cracking run from him, but never any doubt about our winner and he is a great champion as well he is going to be one of the all-time greats i think he's got more to come in his career he's the fourth fastest of all time we saw that in monaco i think he will get quicker and well done that's another gold medal for asbel kiprop chris o'hare what a journey he's been on it came to an end here today but he should be proud of himself he's with phil i think it's important five that was slower than mo farah at the end of the 5,000 meters i wonder if mo's watching that thing oh you know i might i might have had a go at that Steve, please don't give him any more ideas. He's got enough ideas at the moment, hasn't he? <laughs> He's a great champion, Kiprop, and I think he would have beaten anybody, including Mo Farah. Matt Centrovitz, great run from him with a silver medal. Johan Kronje takes the bronze, and we can speak to the champion now. Here's the point of last year, regaining that, well, retaining your world title. Yes, I'm happy that I have managed to defend the title that I won two years ago in Daegu, South Korea. And now that I'm looking forward to running faster next year, it gives me confidence to go ahead. Uh, tell me about the race itself from, from your point of view. Well, uh, the competition itself, I mean, went 
um, perfect as I wanted, and uh, things went as, as I planned. I mean, to defend my title, that was the priority of uh, my my, car my season, and I'm happy that I have achieved the goal. And you've dealt with being the favourite so well. Everybody expected you to win. It's one thing to be a favourite; it's another thing to deliver. Yeah, I did. I managed to. I'm happy that I managed to deliver. I mean, to get a win here tonight, and I'm um, looking forward to finishing the season and starting the next season uh, with confidence. Brilliant performance. Well done. Thank you very much. It's more gold here today. So the full lineup for the 800 final. We've got Majna from the Czech Republic, Sum of Kenya, Montano of the United States, Poistogova from Russia, Martinez, United States, then Savinova, Lupu of Ukraine, and the youngster Wilson from the United States. Malenka Majna is, um, well, she's moving up from the 400. She's a good 400 meter runner. And then so far with uh, a reasonable amount of success at 800. Eunice Sum, the other way for her. Doesn't quite know, I don't think, whether the 1500s are best event or the 800s are best event. She contested the 15 at the last at last year's Olympics. The front running American, Alicia Montano, I think she'll do exactly the same here as she tends to do at every single round and indeed every final as well. She'll take it out hard. Yekaterina Poistogova, the Olympic bronze medalist in this event, fast finisher. Won't see her too near the front, but as others fade, she'll be coming strong. What a year Brenda Martinez of the Americas, of the Americas, of the USA is having. She, again, at 1500 has been a revelation this year, but this is her best event, but that's speed combined with strength could be a real factor. Although a question marks about Savinova's fitness as the crowd respond to seeing their heroine on the big screen and she has all of the attributes when she's at her best to win this, but is she at her best? Natalia Lupu of Ukraine, European indoor champion this year, back in March. And what a talent this youngster is. She beats our own Jess Judd in the World Junior Championships last year in Barcelona to take the gold medal there. And she's made the final this time, 19-year-old AJ Wilson, from the United States. So three Americans who will figure for all sorts of different reasons. Front running Mantano and the defending champion, the Olympic champion, Savinova of Russia. And I haven't heard the crowd is noises at such a level that they didn't hear the call to uh, on your marks. So here we go again. Great atmosphere. So the women's 800 final. Well, Montano, as if we didn't already know it, has gone off so quickly through the first 100 meters. And we'll just watch to see if anyone else wants to break behind her or whether they let her kind of run off. You've got to be careful with it because she's strong enough to hang on and you cannot give her too much. You sort of want to see whether or not she goes too hard. But if she judges it right and they give her a, too much of a gap, 26-8, that's a bit quick through the first 200 metres. And there's only Eunice Sun thinking of going out with her, but she's not sure herself. Well, an interesting opening here. We expected these tactics to unfold. And now it's all about how she can judge the pace, whether the rest of them running as a group, and whether Sabina, the Olympic champion, is anywhere near back to her very best. She's taking her time, she's running steadily in the straight. The young American behind her, Wilson, is running powerfully too. But there's the bell, 56.06. That is quick in the way she's done it. She's beginning to slow already, and now, can she hang on? Can she keep this pace? You can run 800 meters from the front. You can run it really well from the front, but you've got to judge it right. Now, is the race coming from behind? You can sense it building there. 
Has she gone too hard too soon? She levered the bell at the Olympic Games and finished fifth, but this is a big gap this time, and I think she's better this year. So Savinova now giving chase. Have they left it too late? The Americans still five, six metres ahead of the pack, but just starting to tire and tire quickly. They're all going to chase around this bend now. A.G. Wilson is there, Martinez is there, the two Russians, Postogova and Savinova, the defending champion. Montano is still trying to hammer on. Some of Kenya is trying to get in there, and Savinova's got some work to do here to get ahead of Sam. Will that 15 under minute strength finally tell? Sam is going to come away for the gold medal. It's going to be a surprise win. Sam takes it. Savinova, Martinez the bronze. You've got to feel for Montano, but what a run by Sam. You've got to say, Brent, she was the closest, but Savinova, for me, not the athlete she was last year. And then when it's a hard run race like that, and you've got to dig deep into those wells of training and endurance that you'd normally have, I don't think she's got it this year. And that's why she didn't come through and win. That's a big surprise, a massive surprise. And that was a 1500 meter runner's strength that got her there in the end. I think Martinez nipped through for bronze on the inside. But goodness me, the Kenyans are going to be delighted about that. Well, there goes Montano, that 56.06. But that was doing some damage from here. At this point, she's strong. She's trying to hang on. And Sum is the only athlete who's given herself a chance here. The race beginning to come from behind. They're beginning to build and beginning to gather momentum. Sum is holding her form in the back straight. Montano is still going well. But she's gone off so quickly that eventually you sense that she isn't as good as she was earlier in the season and soon now in this position here here's Savinova now she's clearly not at her very very best but into the finishing straight Mon Montano's tiring Savinova if she was at her best would have kicked from there some could have been beaten here but she's hung on kept going and in the finishing straight when everything's spent she starts to work she starts to come through and now she senses she can win this and suddenly she blossoms as she arrives at the finishing line so being a, a brave finish and on, on, on the inside martinez just steals it but that was an interesting if you look at the splits of this you'll see how dramatically montano slowed in the last 200 meters sum kept going kept stronger savina so tried and gave it her very best the, the games being in Moscow was something that inspired her. But then Montano dives for the line. Not to be. Another victory for Kenya in the 800 meters. And Montano literally dived over that line. And she just finished a bit short in fourth place. Inches behind Martinez, a teammate. But you know the Kenyans are really happy today, Steve. They brought down two flags and they needed them both, didn't they, for the laps of honor. Kiprop and now Sum. Some joins there, great champions of recent years, Pamela Jalimo, Janat Jepkoskai, of course. They were expected to win on those occasions, but that's a big surprise. Gold, a big personal best for Eunice Sum. Savinova, the silver, and Martinez again with a personal best, just out dipping her teammates. Slightly easier, but still it will require a great effort and a great time to get a medal. Russia are in there. Women sprinting in Russia, not flourishing, only Savlunis competed in an individual sprint here. But there is Dean Asher Smith, youngest member of the British team, 17. Ashley Nelson, Annabelle Lewis, Haley Jones. They did run a quick time in London three weeks ago, but even that time they ran there would still only have been the sixth quickest time in qualifying. France looked very good as a unit in qualifying. They were third fastest. Sumare on the third leg, a former. European 200 meter champion. But there are the United States. What showdowns we've seen in the men's and women's sprint relays over recent years between the United States and Jamaica. No Carmelita Jetter, no bronze medalist from the individual 100. But all these women finalists in the 100 and 200. Jamaica. Well, they swapped Sherry Ann for Shelly Ann. Sherry Ann Brooks ran the anchor leg in the heat. Shelly Ann Fraser Price will go for a third gold medal here. Canada in lane seven. With uh, Crystal Emmanuel leading them out. She seems up for it. And in lane eight, Brazil also ran similar to France. Uh, 
a good team, strong in legs two and three, with uh, Silva and Krasutsky, who ran well in the 100 and the 200 individually. But Jamaica, Jamaica, well, Usain Bolt will come in surely for the men on the final leg. And Shelley Ann Fraser Price is waiting. Waiting on the final leg. So it's Germany in lane one, Russia in lane two. The noise swells for them. Great Britain in lane three, France in four. The United States in lane five. Jamaica in lane six. Canada in seven, Brazil in lane eight. The United States have won three of the last four world championships. They are the, the defending champions, the Olympic champions, the world record holders. I wonder what Great Britain can do here in this lofty company. The final of the women's four by 100 meters, really. Away they go in the final, look out for the red in lane five, the United States, Jamaica outside, it's Tarmo taking it out for the United States, it's a good first leg by Carrie Russell for Jamaica, how is the changeover from these two giants of sprinting, they're side by side, evenly matched at the moment, perhaps the United States with a slight advantage, Great Britain desperately trying to keep pace, see where they can finish, oh and the United States totally mess up the changeover, and this may now belong to Jamaica, if they are clean, if they can get it round, it will be gold for Jamaica, it will be gold for Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and look at Great Britain at the moment, in second, Haley Jones trying to stay there, trying to hang on for the medal, it's gold for Jamaica, and Great Britain run out of it by France for silver, and the United States trying to come through there, they may have got bronze United States, but they may also have run out of their box earlier on, but no doubt about the gold, it goes to Jamaica, and Great Britain did so well, three quarters of the way around, they were looking so good for a medal, but just couldn't quite keep pace, but it is three gold medals now, Usain Bolt to come, but this is all about Shelly Ann Fraser Price and the Jamaican women's team, 41-29, a new championship record. You like saying that, don't you? A new championship record, indeed it is, Andrew, a good piece of running by the Jamaican team, but I was focusing on the British team and seeing what they were doing and coming into that final exchange. They were there or thereabouts. The medal was in their hands. But unfortunately, pure leg speed was what was lacking. And that cost them the medal. But not the moment. Let's wait and see because there's always disqualifications. You know that can happen in hindsight. So let's see. Good, strong first leg by Jamaica and the United States and I think going down this back straight I was thinking the United States may just have it in the lead but exchanges are crucial and the United States went way way before the check mark they did exchange in the box though so that would be a legal exchange and of course that just opened up the field completely for Jamaica Shelly Ann Fraser Price literally just had to pump her arms and her knees and take a clear victory. But look how the rest of the field are closing down on Great Britain. Jamaica take it, a new championship record. United States, aye, aye, aye. Well, uh, it is at the moment unofficially a bronze for the United States because this was the changeover that lost them this race. Look at that. Man, Ola just, only just got that baton in the box. But boy, it was an ugly change. We always talk about making sure you keep the baton moving. That is the most important thing. You can see exactly what happened there in the USA team. They didn't do it. And France, well, they end up being the top team from Europe. They come through and sneak a medal also. Great run, 42-73 by France. But let's focus on the, the, the GB team. They're a young GB team. First leg, of course, Run by Philip Smith, sorry. Working hard into them. Shouted loud and bold to make sure the outgoing running could clearly hear that Asher Nelson could know exactly what was going on. There's going to be no mistakes. Again, a big ball, a good target there for Annabelle Lewis to take the baton. And now it's just for her to work hard around this turn. Keep 
keep concentrated because the target hand is going to come out in front of you. It came up swiftly. The button was in the hand suddenly. But unfortunately for poor Hayley Jones, just the women on this ankle leg just were faster this occasion. Good experience again, though. They've done well. Fourth place so far. Well, a good end. London 41 29 would have been inside that as well. France with the silver, United States for now with the bronze medal, and Great Britain and Northern Ireland in fourth place. <laughs> and the British quarter. We're looking at Usain Bolt, who's been part of the world record breaking team. What do you think Jamaica's chances are? Slim, very slim, and a little slimmer than that. Is, but I've been wrong before. Just because I'm not sure this is. Um, the, as good a team as we've seen in the past. Uh, uh, let's qualify that a second. These are the four men who finished four of them in the top five positions in the individual 100 meters. So they are very, very good. And of course, they are the best that's here. But Bolt and Ashmead brought in. Warren Weir not in the team after having run in the heats. And Shane Bailey also taken out. He ran on the last leg and really didn't run very well at all, to be honest. It will be Nesta Carter, the bronze medalist, who will individually who will lead them off. But this is his familiar place. You know, by contrast, if you look at the German team, we keep talking about the British team, and you know, we, the German team, they only had two men in the individual 100 meters. They're, they're guys who are going to run the third and fourth leg, and they were ranked in terms of the performances here, 28th and 34th in the individual 100 meters. But it's a good team. It's a well-drilled team. Again, you know, we talk a lot about how you, used you are exchanging the battle amongst each other. Again, Germany, in their club systems, they practice this relay baton exchanging with different, um, different colleagues. And it makes a difference when you come to these championships because you get very comfortable and confident in, in what you're capable of doing. Well, we've seen Trinidad in the past do incredibly well, including at the... Um Worlds and the Olympics, of course, and that's not a bad team. Probably lead-off man might be uh, one of their weakest runners. The Netherlands with uh, Martina to go. Mariano is a very experienced lead-off man for them. Then this German team, who have got to be a threat, not not in terms of the fact as Collins explaining that they, they've got the really quick men, but they are a good team that will get this baton round somewhere close to 38 seconds. United States, interesting that no room for Curtis Mitchell in there, who won a medal in the 200 meters. So we've got Charles Silman, then Mike Rogers, Muki Salam, and then Justin Gatlin. And they need to get or perform much better than they did in that qualifying round. But Jamaica, the favorites. And if they win this, indeed, if they win a medal, Bolt will have 10 world championship medals and will join carl lewis as the most bemedaled man and so great britain adam jamili the star of the show so far he gets the chance to lead them away harry akin zariti james ellington and Dwayne chambers canada gavin smelly aaron brown richards quark and then justin warner who ran very well on the last leg in qualification for canada And the Japanese quartet performed very well indeed. So they're in lane eight. So are they going to stretch it? Are they going for it? Can they put the USA, even Jamaica, under some pressure? Can they get it right and hold off Germany? Great atmosphere for this final event of the World Championships. No Russian team would have been good for them to have made it, would have just added a little bit of zest. The men's 4x100 relay. The climax of the championships. The stage set for another Bolt virtuoso performance, but this time 
as part of his team. Jamili just twitching there. Hey. They get away. Nesta Carter got a much better start than Adam Jamili. And Silman going for the United States. First change. And it's a good one for Great Britain. And maybe they have taken another yard out of Jamaica there. And Harry Aikens are really going well. We're right in this with Jamaica and the USA. Bad change for America and not for Great Britain either. It's the USA leading this, but of course Jamaica have got bolt on the last leg. The USA with a baton journey right there with Britain and so Canada, but here comes Usain Bolt, and Bolt stretching away. It's going to be gone for Jamaica. Usain Bolt flying to the line, 37-37. That's fast, really quick. And the question for Great Britain is, did we get that baton round safely? If we did, it's a bronze medal. It was close on that last leg. Dwayne Chambers got the button in third place, but he was under pressure from Germany, under pressure from Canada, but he was strong and he was good. Now we need to tidy all of this up. Jamaica, I didn't think they had a good second change, but it was good after that. Ashmead and Bolt did brilliantly well. And that's now world championship gold medals for Usain Bolt the guys think they're okay they're just checking up at the screen and we're just going to check now Colin it looked virtually perfect for them if I'm, if I'm honest Adam Jimmy got a, a rocket start uh, you know this young man must be absolutely exhausted he's had one amazing championships and he ran very well on that first leg and it was a good stretch change to Harry AA who passed it then to James but that was a very close exchange, that. That was right, right on the knuckle. It was a close one indeed, but I wasn't sure if any flags went up. There's people still over that far side, still discussing things. But Jamaica, well, when you've got Usain Bolt on the last leg, who are at his best as metres, metres in front of the rest of the field, then there's no need to wait. But let's have a look at here. Steve, what are you thinking? I'm a bit worried, Colin. I thought you may be. This was a great, strong performance, as I said. A good stretch in the middle of the zone, and Harry Akizumiti flew down that back straight. Worked hard, but this is an exchange we've got to watch. He adjusts the baton as he's coming in. James's hand is there. He's not in the middle of the box, so now he's in the middle of the box, and the hand, he should have had the baton by now. He's pushing it, he's stretching it. He is in the box. Does he hold it? Does he hold it? Does he grab it? This is going to be very tight indeed. If we keep quiet, we may get away with it. Yeah, let, let, let's just hope nobody sort of noticed that he didn't quite have the button in his hand. He didn't, Colin. That last one was a, a decent change, and Dwayne Chambers ran well here. But if any of the other teams are looking at these replays, they've, they've got... Uh, did you see a flag go up? We were looking on the far side. I didn't really see a flag go up. But sometimes the officials don't spot things like that. They should have done. You're even in commentary, Colin. I was worried right from the very beginning. That didn't look as though he had control of the baton as he went out of the box. We were looking at his hand being outstretched by the middle of the box. It was. It just the factor came that the baton didn't arrive there. It was a great performance by the guys. And I am just hoping that the judges who were over there and they look very close here to it, and they make a decision one way or the other. Well, on our computer, we wait until we get a literally a green light that says the result is official. That doesn't mean to say, that doesn't mean to say that other teams won't protest this once they see it. So at the moment, Great Britain have the bronze medal. And if so, that 37.8 is a really good performance. And if... Uh, that stays, if that result stays, it's a great end to the championships. But I will reiterate, if nobody protests, then uh, this is how it will stay. 37-36, this is unofficial at the moment, 37-66 for the United States. Great Britain, 37.8. They have the bronze at the moment. Let's just have another look. 
So the yellow line is what you're looking for. The first yellow line, there you go, is the start of the changeover block, uh, box. Harry's shouting now. The hand goes out, and about now you'll see the white line, which is the uh, designates, sorry, designates, uh, it's already gone past that. Now you see that yellow line, the second one, it has, he has to have the baton. The, as long as the baton is in his hand before it crosses that line, and it's not, he has to have control, it has to be in his hand. Doesn't matter where his feet are, it's where the baton is, and it's got to be in his hand. So let's just have a look here. There. Now that's two, three metres out of the box. And I think the guys knew, you know, there, there, there was that, that bit of hesitation from um, James Ellington. Look at this. Yeah, he knew. And if they do get disqualified, be very disappointed for them because it was a very brisk time. Like, going under any, any time under 38 seconds is strong. Any time you do that, then you put yourself in with a big chance of a medal. So, if it doesn't stand for them, the guys will be bitterly disappointed because they've worked so, so hard this year. And to actually finish in third spot, and then just by a tiny mistake to lose your medal, they will be absolutely disappointed. But it's the last, as is often the way with Usain Bolt. Personally, I think it looks a little bit like a replica Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Children all over the world watching this will be a little bit jealous, but then most of us are a little bit jealous of Usain <laughs> Bolt. Uh, that man has so much charisma, as do my guests tonight, of course. <laughs> Colin Jackson and Denise Lewis are with me all evening. As always, though, it comes thick and fast in these Diamond League meets, and the men are out for the 400-meter hurdles, our first race this evening, which is loaded with talent. Six out of the top eight in the final in Moscow on show. And our commentary team are waiting to call this one for you. Looking after the field events, there's Paul Dickinson, Steve Cram, and Andrew Potter will look after events on the track. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Gabby. Good evening, everybody, for this final Diamond League of the year. And for many, it's uh, certainly one of the best, this wonderful stadium with such heritage. And this meeting, of course, the Van Damme meeting, the memorial meeting, after one of their great athletes back in the 70s. First event, the 400 meter hurdles, as Gabby said, we've got Van Heeren, Gaiman, Cisneros, Hahn, Gordon, Tinsley, Green, Coulson, and for Great Britain in lane nine, nine lanes here, Rhys Williams. You saw a diamond against the name of Javier Coulson. He is leading the diamond race, but Tinsley could win this. He could win, he doesn't have to win tonight, he becomes second, at least second. Coulson is not in the top three because there are double points tonight. It's normally 4 2 and 1 for 1 2 3. Tonight, eight points, four points, and two points. Now, Leaford Green's been added to the field because unfortunately Felix Sanchez, the Olympic champion, had a little bit of a rib problem over the last couple of days and uh, a bit too sore to race. And this man here, Javier Coulson, really disappointing world championships, but he does have the chance to win the diamond race here tonight. He's got 13 points going into this. And Reese Williams. Well, what a consistent year he's had, Reese. Under 49 seconds on two, three occasions. Again in Italy this week, and Rovereto had a good race there where he was just beaten by Green and Cisneros, who will be in lane three. And the World Championships were won, of course, by this man, Jehu Gordon of Trinidad and Tobago, just by one hundredth of a second from Tinsley, the American who's outside him in lane six. Jehu Gordon can't win the diamond race tonight. And he certainly will want to finish with a victory and I think reiterate his world championship status. Tinsley, yet again, last year and this year, went into the championships as the world leader, came out with a silver medal. Away cleanly, and this crowd of around 50,000 will Great, a great atmosphere in here tonight, they're a knowledgeable crowd and they're already seeing Coulson with that familiar headband down the back straight in lane 8, it's gone past Reese Williams already, and there's Tinsley with Gordon, not yet making up too much ground inside him, Cisneros has gone up pretty quickly in lane 3, and Coulson though, setting the pace, chasing this diamond race for him, needs to get into the top 3 here, but they'll all come and chase him down in the home straight, Tinsley just starting to get moving now and so is the world champion, Gordon, the two of them coming through here, but it's Coulson still leading it. Reese Williams in about fifth place at the moment. 
and Gordon's trying to get there. Coulson always tends to fade at the end here. Comes off that last hurdle poorly, and there he goes, the Welsh champion pulling away. And it's a win for Jay Gordon, 48-32. Well, that perhaps no surprise, given that he's the man who's carried the form through. We make Reese Williams in seventh place in the end. Again, tough out there in lane nine. Not the uh, the best 400 meter hurdle race of the year, but this is the man who's timed the season well, won the World Championships, and has finished it off on a real high here. Bit of a ragged race there, I thought. It, it, your Colson. Andrew always goes out hard like that, and he must have thought, well, I've had this tactic before, when I'm running well, it works for me, but he tends to do it at the beginning of the season. It's almost, this race is like his season, it runs out of steam. Yes, and uh, like his season, Jehu Gordon finishes so well. He was so strong in the uh, closing stretches in Moscow, where he just held off Tinsley, and here he, he powered his way, and you can see Coulson absolutely spent, and he went off so strongly, Coulson, but again, you know, if you watch the hurdles quite often, the Coulson does tend to fade in the latter stages, but he really powered his way past past Reese Williams in the early stages. But one thing you see from Jehu Gordon as well, when he finishes down the home straight, his technique remains so strong. But we're talking about uh, Avi Coulson was in the hunt for the Diamond League race, and that was what he was looking for. But Reese Williams just, well, it's a, a strong field that he was up against here. I think he did finish down in eighth place or so. Mm. Confirmed it was eighth place for Reese Williams. So disappointed in the World Championships we saw afterwards. He a real heartache not to make the final there. But uh, again, just a reiteration of the, the quality that he's up against here. Well, Colson did well because he held off Tinsley. They've been given exactly the same time, I can tell you, on the computer. But because Colson is in the top three, well, to be honest, because Tinsley had to get into the top two, it will mean that Colson will win the diamond race. There you go, 15 points added to, two points added to his 13. Gordon could never get to the win tonight, but uh, he'll finish in second place. But of course, he was our winner tonight, 48-32. Cisneros sneaking through for second place, and then very tight there, wasn't it, for second, third, and fourth. Reese Williams, 50.13. packed stadium as ever here there may be a big night of international football with belgium playing scotland but they love their athletics they've come out to show their support and coming up well that kicked us off well but we have a great women's 100 meters next up then it's the men's 200 meters at 7:45. watch out for usain bolt james dasa olu in a loaded men's 100 every runner under 10 seconds christina horogu is back out for the first time as well since moscow a head-to-head -head with Moncho. And there's a great field lineup as well here this evening. La Villigny in the pole vault and Teddy Tamgo going later on in the triple jump. We'll be across all of those for you. Aragawi there with Hannah England in the 1500 meters as well. She's passionate about as well. She's got a balanced life, you might say, things that she loves, but it's running that she was, she was born to do. Well, it's running that sets her apart from everyone else. She is fantastic. But as you said, it is about setting the goals. We heard that from Reese. But for this lady, she needs to feel that she's reigning supreme. Alongside someone like Bolt, she is the, actually the best out, out there. OK, let's get up to commentary. Andrew Cotter is going to call the women's 100 metres. Yes, who can challenge Shelley Ann Fraser Price? No blessing of the Bari here or Muriel Ahure, but there is real quality in the, another uh, uh, Jamaican and Keron Stewart may well do that. Barbara Pierre and Alex Anderson, two very strong Americans. So there are those who could challenge, but really, as we've been talking about in the 100 and the 200 this year, Shelley Ann Fraser Price has reigned supreme. There she is. We talk about the challenger she has had of of late of recent seasons in the 100 Carmelita Jetta has had injuries a few problems just off the pace and in the 200 Monica Campbell Brown her demise so really she's been she's had a, a free ride in both the 100 and the 200 her winning margin in the 100 meters of the world championships was over two tenths of a second the biggest ever winning margin in the world championship comfortable in the 200 as well and the 4 by 100 anchoring Jamaica home. On your mark. But here we have Tiffany Townsend from the USA in one, Verena Seiler of Germany in two, Carrie Russell of Jamaica goes in three, Alex Anderson, the American in four, 
Shelley and Fraser Price in five, Barbara Pierre in six, Kieran Stewart in seven, Charonda Williams in eight, and there is a Daphne Skippers, the heptathlete, very, very good sprinter though. May have her sights on Nelly Cummins' 100 meter record. The women's 100 meters. Ted. Away they go first time, and it's a good start by Shelley Ampere. The press already, she's a metre up, two metres up on the rest, and she's strolling away. This is a display of power sprinting from Shelley Ampere. Her prize, it is a, a demonstration just coming through. Alex Anderson looked to sneak through for second place ahead of Carrie Russell, but Shelley Ampere is a prize. Dominant, utterly, utterly dominant. From, from gun to line, and the smile's there again. It's a familiar sight this season, but that really was. She was unchallenged and utterly supreme. Well, what a race there from Shelley and Fraser Price to finish off uh, the main part of her season. That is a new meeting record into a slight headwind as well, a minus 0.3. I mean, it's, all, it's very nice conditions here this evening, very warm. Familiar, good start. Of course, no Hure here, no Blessing Okakbari, and no real pressure once she's through the first 30, 40 metres, and she just keeps going away. Anderson finishes pretty strong after a poor start, gets ahead of Russell, but clear air between the Jamaican and the rest and really that's been the story of the season it's been all about her and again you know a, a brilliant season of uh, consistency right from the early uh, meetings and then with that run in Moscow in fact it was only a run in Moscow that was quicker than this she ran 1071 in Moscow just a hundredth quicker than this time here I'm not sure anyone's become as dominant as her. You know, over the last couple of years, she's become, I mean, you know, obviously, if we go back to 2008, and then a bit of up and down, and challenges from Jetta and the rest, but since uh, last year, she's been almost completely dominant. Well, I just wonder, blessing on Kabari, if she gets her start sort of, but of course, she is really a good 200-meter runner. She has the long jump as well, so she's not a 100-meter specialist, but Shelley and Fraser Price, and we uh, talked about the demise of others, and Kelly and Baptiste as well, and others, so they, they faded away, and Carmelita Jetter was her real rival, but she's had her injury problems. I wonder if perhaps her best days are behind her, but really it was just Shelley and Fraser Price against the clock there, and I wondered if she was going to sneak below 10.70 as well. Didn't quite do it, but again, a fine way to end the season. And there is a confirmation of the uh, diamond race, the... Well, this was already her. She's already won the 200 meters as well, so that just puts a seal on her dominance in the, the sprints, both 100 and 200 victorious, and taking her lap of honor inside the Baudouin Stadium. Here that we are, 1072 meeting record for the Van Damme meeting, and uh, two other women sneaking under 11 seconds in Alex Anderson and Carrie Russell. Adam Jamili running here, but he's pulled out. We're represented though with uh, Chris Clark and James Ellington from Great Britain. Let's hand you over to commentary. Full uh, lineup for you there. Ellington, Smalik, Chris Clark was in three. Ashmi, Dick, Swear, Martina, Dwyer, Saidi and Dure. And we're just a few seconds away from the start here, but it's worth mentioning that uh, Chris Clark ran a stunning 20.22 in Bedford recently and has all of a sudden found himself in this sort of company. Um, Walter Dix in the middle in lane five. I can't see him. He's in cam camouflage. What is he wearing? That's me. Walter Dix is inside Warren Weir, of course, the Olympic bronze medalist and world silver medalist behind Bolt in the 200 metres. So what can Chris Clark do here? His first opportunity in lane three, Ellington's in lane one. Watch out for Ashmead in four as well. <laughs> Dix gets a very, very good start in lane five. He's already taken a couple of metres out of Weir, Chris Clark trying to chase uh, Ashmead, Ellington's got a good start around that bend in lane one as well, but it's Ashmead leading them in a minute, then it's Dixon Weir, Weir now starting to pull away, and that lovely style of his, Warren Weir going well in lane nine, finishing quickly, Sadie and Dury, but we Weir from Ashmead and Dix, Clark just got the best of the Brits there, Dix got an incredible start, Weir not so good around the bend, but then the second half of the bend, and his transition into the home straight was really good, when Ashmead looked as though perhaps it might be his night, and Warren Weir with 19.87. Well, we've had some great 200 meter races here, of course. You go back to 2011, and Johan Blake and Dix on that occasion was second in about 19.5. But it was a great start from the American, but Warren Weir just seems to get better and better. Yeah, so I was keeping half an eye on the race, but I was also looking at Chris Clark in lane three. Big step up from Bedford to, uh, to Brussels. 
and uh, the Van Dam meeting. But Warren Weir, it's just a, I don't know, there's not much to him, but he just flows over the final 50 meters or so. Chris Clark, who, coming around the bend, looked a little bit uncomfortable, but it's a beautiful finish from Warren Weir. And well, he rightly is the, the champion of the Diamond League race. And uh, if it weren't for Usain Bolt, he'd be the preeminent 200 meter man. Tremendous effort from Warren Weir. It's been a very consistent season for him. This is his strength. He's actually talked about uh, trying out the 100 a little bit more. He's just outside 10 seconds for that, but certainly this is where his strength lies. And what strength? Well, Weir, as I said, for me, he's an athlete who's, you know, he's only going to get better. He's only going to get quicker. Whether or not he's going to be able to challenge Blake when he comes back, and of course, Bolt's going to be around for at least another three years but uh, he's won the diamond race for the 200 meters Bolt could have run in this and had a go at it but he decided not to left the way clear for his teammate to earn a few well I'm sure very welcome dollars forty thousand dollars for winning the diamond race in any particular event Ash Mead with the season's best and Walter Dix of course who had that hamstring injury at the American trials has missed most of the season coming back strongly Chris Clark 20 an injury blighted season and there is a uh, Milka Chemos the world champion first from Kenya to take this title really since the women's 3000 meter steeplechase came on the scene in the major championships it's been dominated by the Russians but they seem to have slipped away a little bit now and the East Africans are rising a set for their very interesting race here because she fell in the final of the world championships but still managed to come through still managed to come through to take the bronze medal so I think she might feel she's a, a point to prove the other uh, medalist silver medalist was Lydia Chip Krui and uh, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians, of course, very, very strong. He what? Iyalu. So he beat Milka Chemos in, in Zagreb on Tuesday. So as it is with so many distance events, it seems to be becoming a battle between the, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians, despite the, the early Russian promise. But Elish McColgan, the problem with her left shin, which arose just before Rome, and she's been dealing with that, managing that, hasn't had the track time, the impact time actually running, but She's dealing with it well. Personal best in the World Championships in qualifying for the final. Finished 10th there. Great effort. What can she do here? Because this will be a, a reasonably quick race. We do have pacemakers to take it out. And so we'll see what uh, what the fancy runners can do, but also what Ailish McColgan can run. Yeah, I think a good opportunity for Ailish, as you said. But I think at the front, we're going to see something pretty quick. Schmitzman has to go through a very fast 3-2-3-3 three, three, three for the first thousand. And that's because Chip Karui, who should be following her, this is a bit quick from Schmidt, to be honest, she's gone a little bit too quick. Chip Karui, who was second uh, to her teammate Chemos, as you said, at the World Championships, basically says, I can't beat Chemos in a sprint finish. I want to win the diamond uh, race, I want to win this race here in Brussels, and my only way I can do it is if I can have a fast play pace, please. So she asked the organisers to get it out there in 3-3, but of course, you can't have a gap like that. You know, you've got to go with it, you can't ask for a fast pace and then not go, and Schmidt was told to watch for the field going with us. I don't think she's looked around once, to be honest, but it's up to Chet Karui to get out there hard and try and make it a hard race. Unfortunately, at the minute, it um, doesn't look as though she's been prepared to do that. Yes, there is a big screen in here, but it doesn't show the race, so Schmidt has no idea. The only way she could find out is by looking around and seeing the massive gap, only Chirotic for company, so the rest of it, the rest of the race, not going with that pace as we head quickly to the high jump. Well, it's still early days in this high jump competition. We've got the world champion, we've got the Olympic champion. This is Kachina. 1 meter 93 the target, and she sails over at the second attempt. It was a terrible, terrible attempt first time round. But that's much better. Former world youth champion. She's only 20 years old, but one of the stars of the future. And she glows clear at 193. So still the pace is, uh, is beat, beaten out and still most of them refusing to go with Svetlana Schmidt, the Ukrainian who Steve was saying was asked to take them through a thousand meters in three minutes two, but uh, Chemos just hanging back a little bit at the moment. We talked about the records in this event and we talked about the uh, the Russian strength, the world record still held by Gunara Galkina. The former Olympic champion, in fact, she's the only woman who's gone under nine minutes. There's a good six second gap back to the next runner, and Chemos is a nine minute seven runner. So, again, interesting to see what Chemos can run. Interesting always in the steeplechase to watch some of the hurdling techniques as well, because I think if some of these improve, they can go even quicker. 
Yeah, you're right. If you watch Chip Carew, she's the one with the um, white. Um, what do you call that? Hair. Come on, help me out. Andrew. Hair band or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, the tiger hair band. She, you know, she started the scene with a real band. I, when I saw her running Doha at the beginning of the year, I thought, here's a, an athlete who's really, a Kenyan athlete, who's really going to get the grips with this event. For a hurdle technique, just watch her coming into this. She's taller than the rest, and she actually should just make room for the hurdle. And she jumps too much. You know what I mean? She's, she's got a, she's a good few inches taller than Chemos. She's got a good long stride when she gets moving. And she often stutters going into hurdles as her pacemaker steps off. Um, you see her there just checking her stride. And when we get into the latter part of the race in particular, that hurdle technique becomes even more important because you've got to be attacking hurdles if you break off the pole box. One of the guys who's got a chance of winning the Diamond League in the pole vault for the PDs of Greece. Well clear there, 567. Of course, Le Villani is in this competition as well. He is the Diamond League leader at the moment. And all he's got to all he's got to do is finish in the top two. Well, here goes one of the world's best. The villainy been in brilliant form this season. He lost the world title. By his own admittance, he lost it. The German Holtstepper didn't win it, according to L'Equipe, the French newspaper. But uh, Le Villeny still considers himself to be the best in the world at the moment. It's early doors yet, but well on the way to winning the Diamond League. Well, it is quick. The women's staple chase and Schmidt did take them through in just outside three minutes, two, three minutes, three. And uh, Liz, uh, Liz McColgan, Ailish <laughs> McColgan, Liz McColgan could probably still do it. Ailish McColgan was through there in three minutes, eight for for the uh, first kilometre. She's just, just being left off the back there, coming through the line about now. But she's uh, running pretty well, but it's a, it's a quick pace for Ailish McColgan, no doubt about that. Well, she was right on the British record pace. And if she could just keep in touch with a couple of them who were coming off the back of that group, because this is the hard bit of the race. I mean, Ailish has talked about this a lot. She's a good finisher, Ailish McColgan. She's strong on the last lap, but it's these middle laps where she's got to stay in contact. And what's working out well for her here is her two or three athletes just coming off the back of that group. She's the only European here in this um, leading contingent. She's the only one kind of going with this place. She's doing incredibly well. And Barbara Parker's British record of 9.24, just stuttering into that hurdle there. Barbara Parker's record is one which I think, on a, on a day, Ailish is capable of. One thing she has talked about as well as McCorgan is that her hurdling technique it can certainly improve because she just simply doesn't get the hurdling practice because the impact on her legs at the moment she's got to uh, got to qualify that she does hurdle straight over the water barrier now she prefers that she's changed that mid-season and again just moving past Nyambura there as the race itself develops a little bit further ahead and we head to the high jump. Skolkanak goes clear, absolutely sails over there. She really has been in brilliant form this year, won the World Championship ahead of Chicharova. But uh, it was Russia on top of the medal rostrum and in third place through Chicharova on that occasion. You see Eilish McColgan there just trying to keep that runner in front of her in her sights as the race continues apace and the little sideways hurdling technique of the, the leaders take them through. Nota Chemos sitting in there fairly comfortably at the moment. Fancy Chirotic still out in front, the 23-year-old. And uh, Ilish Colgan hanging on. You mentioned she just hasn't been able to get the time on the track. She's been working in the pool and on the cross trainer and only latterly is able to get the been able to get the miles in on the track, but again stuttering into the, the barrier there. And these all add up to seconds and seconds add up a little bit further. And uh, Chirotic pulls out in front and leaves it to the other Kenyans behind her. A real stumble there in the water, but now it's Chemos out in front. Yeah, Fancy Cheritage had been um, given the job of trying to keep the pace going through the middle laps, and uh, you can see she just pulled off there. But Chep Karui now is trying to do what she should have been doing right from the very beginning. But you know when you go 3-3 three, three, and then they slow to a 3-8 for the second kilometre, uh, it's actually a lot slower than 3 11 for the second kilometre, well, of course, Chemos and the others are just going to think, thank you very much. So Chip Carew is now going to try, to try and make it a bit of a long run from home. Unfortunately, Ailish McColgan dropping off well off that uh, British record pace in that second kilometre. And it's now um, not quite on her own, but it's got a tough last couple of laps to go. So Chip Carew, she's got to attack this, Andrew. She's really got to try and make it, you know, 600 from home, 500 from home, whatever. Try and put a bit of a burst in, otherwise we're going to have the same old story. Yes, Chip Carew and Chemos silver and gold from the world championships and there is a set we mentioned her fall in the final that was only 800 meters out and she still managed to 
uh, recover and come through to take the bronze medal. So what does she have left? As these four begin to separate themselves away and look a little bit further back and see Elish McColgan who's running alongside the young Ethiopian Burtukan Adamu. And at this stage of the race, you really can lose or gain significant amounts by good hurdling technique. Chemos out in front, Chip Kurui, Asefa, the three medalists from Moscow. And uh, Chip Kurui just looks to put in a little surge and then Chemos responds. And these three.